everybody, welcome back to another episode of 5-Minute Gaming News, the show that may or may not be 5 minutes. Today in the news, Dungeons and Dragons. It seems to be all the craze these days, so why is it so hard for them to make good video games? Okay, that's actually kind of a lie. There's several great D&D inspired video games, like for example the current hot beta preview game Dark and Darker that everyone I know is raving about. But when it comes to Wizards of the Coast, best known for tabletop D&D and Magic the Gathering, they simply have the hardest time getting games out. They've spent the last few years investing in video games and signed contracts with several game makers and built at least six studios of their own in Austin, Texas and Montreal. And sure, there are games like Baldur's Gate 3 which have a lot of excitement around them, but for the most part, they're producing things like Dark Alliance which had issues. So it is both surprising and not at all that they are canceling at least five video game projects from their associated studios. Wizards of the Coast is still committed to using digital games, a spokesperson said in a statement to Bloomberg, adding that the company has made some changes to our long-term portfolio to focus on games which are strategically aligned with developing our existing brands and those which show promise in expanding or engaging our audience in new ways. And that's just corpo speak for, we don't got a lot of money anymore to spend on wacky ideas, which, Makes sense, because Hasbro, their parent company, its shares fell 40% last year. Yeah, that does suck for those dev teams that are not gonna get to make those games, but I guess no game is better than a bad game? I don't know, it always sucks when games are shut down, but five games? I'm not really sure what that says. I'd love to know what you think, it clearly says something, and it doesn't say anything good, that's for sure. If we're gonna talk good, Let's talk about Microsoft's ZeniMax employees unionizing. The Communications Workers of America announced today that a super majority of quality assurance workers at ZeniMax Studios have officially voted to join the ZeniMax Workers United CWA, forming the first video game studio union at parent company Microsoft and what will be for a while at least the largest union of video game workers in the US. It's difficult to express in words just how much winning our union matters to us, senior QA tester Dylan Burton said. We've been working so hard to get here that it would be impossible not to be excited. We know this is not the end of our hard work, but reaching this milestone gives us faith that when workers stand together, we can accomplish anything we set our minds to. And a pretty interesting part of this is that unlike Activision Blizzard, which has been trying to stop unions every step of the way, Microsoft was kind of hands off. In fact, after the vote, Microsoft had this to say. In light of the results of the recent unionization vote, we recognize the Communications Workers of America as the bargaining representative for the quality assurance employees at ZeniMax. We look forward to engaging in good faith negotiations as we work towards a collective bargaining agreement. And I think that's great. If you've been following this channel for a while, you know I cover this all the time. I think unionization of gaming workers is awesome. And it's also fascinating to see a lot of it's in QA. And I know probably some of you were like, why is it always in QA? The reason, I'm gonna let you know, uh, quality assurance is one of those jobs that sounds really cool, like you get to game test, but at the end of the day, it's just running into the same wall 50 times. It is kind of soul grinding work, but very needed and also the least paid in the company. And so these people banding together to be like, look, look what we do for you, we deserve more, I think, is a, I think is a valid point. And having collective bargaining allows them some backbone and some strength and some weight in their voice when they bring up issues that need to be addressed. Speaking of issues, on the other side of the world, a pro wrestler has a serious case of mommy issues. Because pro wrestler Kenny Omega has made his return to Japan's Wrestle Kingdom in the nerdiest and best way possible. Entering the ring to the Sephiroth theme One Wing Angel, dressed as Sephiroth, with the Jumbotron screen flashing the One Wing. Look, it's amazing. It's nerdy as hell, but it's amazing. Omega, who has been here in the States, part of the AEW for the last few years, has done some pretty great entrances in the past. In 2019, he entered as Sans from Undertale. He's also done some Overwatch cosplay. Look. I love it, no suggestions. The crossover between wrestling and video games keeps happening more and more. Totally here for it. You know what else I'll be here for? Ooh, that's a segue. I'll be at MAGFest this weekend. By all means, come check me out in the DC area if you're there for MAGFest. It is a great, great convention, lots of amazing music, and uh, Friday and Saturday night, I host a game show. And come on down. 
maybe win some prizes or get your prizes destroyed. You know, it's that kind of show. It'll be a ton of fun. I will see you there, but also I'll see you here tomorrow for another episode of 5-Minute Gaming News.